if you are an importer. If the good arrive, if the good is shipped by your buyer, by your supplier, and document gets to your bank, and document is supposed, payment is due in 60 days, but you have received the good as important, and the good is bad, you can't stop your bank from paying. If when the bank receives document, the document are complete. Yeah, good day. My name is Dela Inboy. I'm your export doctor, and today I'll be talking about why, what is the principle of autonomy in letter of credit, or why you should learn about the principle of autonomy as an exporter. What is the implication for you as an exporter? Uh, what, are, what is it even all about? Uh, uh, this is DBA TV, where we discuss every international trade. If you are just joining for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Now, in today's video. First of all, I would like to start by saying there are two principles that get out of credit transaction. One is called the principle of autonomy, the other one is called the principle of strict compliance. So in this video, my focus will be on autonomy. Autonomy basically talks about independence. Autonomy basically talks about independence. It's called the principle of independence. Now, on that letter of credit, the principle of autonomy basically, or independent principle basically says that a letter of credit is independent of every contract around it. So for example, before a letter of credit is issued, buyer and seller already sign an agreement. That agreement must be a solid agreement, a very important agreement. Why? Because that agreement is what is needed as a fallback if letter of credit fails. If for any reason the bank in question fails and the bank is unable to pay, the exporter have a recourse to the importer for payment through, if the good have been shipped and he has the goods, but the bank will not pay because the bank failed, through the principle of autonomy. Because the contract is independent of letter of credit. The contract is independent of letter of credit. The contract is independent of a letter of credit. The contract is independent of credit. This is the reason why, if you are an importer, if the good arrive, if the good is shipped by your buyer, by your supplier, and document gets to your bank, and document is supposed, payment is due in 60 days, but you have received the good as importer, and the good is bad, you can't stop your bank from paying. If when the bank receives document, the document are compliant, because the agreement the bank have with your supplier to pay is different from the agreement between you, the importer, and the exporter. Under the principle of autonomy, the bank, the issuing bank obligation to pay the exporter is independent of the non-performance under the contract between the buyer and the seller. How does it affect you as an exporter? That you should have a solid contract that protects you so that if letter of credit fails, you can see seek a redress, probably in the court of law through arbitration. You can see seek a redress under the contract signed. That is why, don't say you just collect only pro forma invoice without having a solid sales and purchase agreement because you think you have an LC. The LC can fail. The LC can fail. The bank can be shut down. And it can happen to the bank. Even though that does not happen frequently, but it's a possibility. So having an agreement is very important. It protects you against the situation where the LC fail because the economy failed or the bank failed. Whatever it is that prevents payment from coming through the LC, give the opportunity to recourse back to the agreement signed between the buyer and seller. So the agreement is what protects you. The principle of autonomy is letting you know that if for any reason the contract, the LC fail, you can see get paid because the LC is independent of the underlying agreement between the buyer and the seller. I hope this is clear. The principle of autonomy or the principle of independence is particularly important for bankers and particularly for importers. Particularly for importers. Particularly for importers. This is the reason why an importer needs to ensure that there is a pre-shipment inspection. Because it's with autonomy, exporter can ship rubbish and it will be paid. 
Because bank deal in document and not in goods. Bank deal in document and not in goods. Bank deal in documents and not in goods. Because bank deal in document and not in goods, that means the bank can pay if the document are right. The bank can pay if the documents are right, even though the goods being shipped, the goods being shipped are bad. Even though the goods being shipped are bad. This law and principle is very important for importers. Exporters should ensure you have good contract to protect you. Importers should ensure you have good contract. I mean, you have pre-shipment inspection agent to do inspection and confirm the quality of item being shipped to you so that you don't get to have rubbish being shipped to you. I hope this video has been of help to you. If it has been of help, give us a thumbs up. If you have friends who are importers who need to hear about it, <laughs> share with them. Share with your friends. Don't just share with them. If you have questions around letter of credit, and I was talking a lot on different letter of credit in this series, drop your comment in the comment section. But more importantly for me is the fact that you subscribe and join the community of those who are learning from DBA TV. My name is Dilaimi Bo, and I'm your expert doctor, and I'm signing out.